Welcome back, you guys. This is Amber with Amber Poetry and Song, and I have another vision that I'm coming to share. This vision I had on um, December 2nd, 2022, um, at 9.05, I saw something that looked like the circles of tentacles on an octopus. And so I looked up 9.05, it means purse bag, a money bag, um, purse. Um, I looked up tentacles and what they're used for. They're used for grasping or moving about or bearing sense organs um, on an octopus. And then the circles on, on those tentacles are called suckers. So the suckers are used to, they have this in quotation marks, walk, basically to move things. They're used to walk or pass food or other objects down the arm. Okay, so um, what I understood, this is, is about the body of Christ as well as, you know, letting go of things and not holding on so tightly to things that the Lord is telling you to let go of um, for purposes of distrib distributing to others that are in need or that are, um, you know, so that you could receive provision for what it is that the Lord is leading you to do, calling you to do, um, or even um, to receive something better than what the Lord is telling you to let go of. And so, um, The suckers, um, when I looked this up about octopus, a fact about these suckers is that when, when these octopus catch like fish or something, um, these suckers are so strong to the point where anything that tries to pull away, it makes it, it does something to where it, it makes it even harder for whatever prey it catches, um, it makes it hard for them to pull away because like the, the strength in the sucker basically intensifies, okay? But like I said, this is about being able to let go of whatever the Lord you know, tells you to let go of for purposes of giving to others, uh, for purpose of receiving uh, provision for things he's calling you to do or even to receive you know, something better than, than what he's wanting you to let go of. Um, so the place I was led to was Luke chapter 12. Um, and I'm going to read, the focus is verse 33, but I'm going to read verses 22 to 34. So Luke chapter 12. And verse 22 is where I'm going to start. Um, this says, and he said unto his disciples, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothe the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you? O ye of little faith. It says, and seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Okay, so I'm going to continue reading. It says, fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It says, sell that ye have and give alms, provide yourselves bags, which wax not old, 
a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. So, uh, verse 34, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So don't be afraid to sell what you have um, in order to get what you need um, to, to do, you know, if God has given you an assignment to be able to do those things um, or to give to others, to distribute to the, to others that are in need, um, you know, don't lay up for yourselves treasure on earth. You know, the Lord wants you to enjoy the fruit of your labor, but don't do it. To, don't lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Um, lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven, in heaven by um, serving others that are in need um, that that could use what it is that you have um and also so that you can receive you know what it is that you need um to be able to complete the assignment that the lord is giving you so that you can receive provision for that thing and so the next place i'm gonna go that i was led to because um like i said this is this is all really a lot about the body of Christ, um, basically operating in a way to where you're flowing um, from one another when it comes to distributing things that you may need, you know, things that you may need, that people may need because they are in need or just things that they may need to help them be able to do what it is God is needing them to do. So um, Matthew chapter 19 is where I'm going next. And I'm going to read verses 20 through 22. Okay, so Matthew 19, verse 20, it says, The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Okay, so I'm going to start at verse 16, at verse 16, because it was asked, it says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery adultery thou shalt not steal thou shalt not bear false witness honor thy father and thy mother and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself the young man said unto him all these things have i kept from my youth what lack i yet so this was the the um about the rich young ruler this part in this verse it says um jesus said unto him if thou will be perfect go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. So he had laid up for himself, uh, for himself treasure on earth instead of treasures in heaven. He, you know, basically saying he's kept all those things. What else was there left for him to do? And the main thing God was telling him to do was to sell what he have and distribute to the, those that are poor, you know, those that are in need, because that's what he wants us all to do, especially those who are more wealthy. He wants them to distribute, you know, to the, to the poor, to those that are in need. Um, and in them doing that, whenever you give, you're going to receive, you know, whenever your hand is open, you're going to receive back, you know, more than what you have given. Um, but that's what the Lord wants us to do. He wants us to distribute among one another in the body of Christ and to those who are less fortunate, those who are poor, those who are needy. Um, and so that you would lay up for yourself treasures in heaven instead of treasure on earth. 
because those things can't go with you anyway once your time is up on on this earth the, what it could be what could be done is it passed down you know to your family um and that's if you have someone to pass it down to but all in all those things can't go with you and so in order to be able to in, to receive eternal life he's telling him sell what you have and give to the poor because the lord is closest to the poor um that he he is close to the poor um and that's reminding me of the scripture when he's telling them to, to depart from him you workers of iniquity because when they didn't give to the poor they didn't give to him because when you're given to the poor those who are poor those who are, who are without those who are lacking you're giving to christ so he told him in order to to receive eternal life because he said he had kept everything that christ had uh mentioned he said to go and sell what you have and give to the poor and that made him sorrowful because many times when many people have like a lot of money their their money is where their heart is and they're not willing to let go of those things you know their treasures they value that stuff more than they value god more than they value you know serving and helping others and that's not all people but a lot of people that are wealthy are like that but he's telling us to sell what we have and to give to the poor and that and in doing that you will have treasure in heaven and so the next place i'm gonna go to is um acts chapter four because this is where i was led to and i'm gonna read verses 34 to 35 this is about sharing among the believers so 34 says neither was there any among them that lacked for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles feet and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need so in in doing those things you're helping the body of christ and what it is that they have need for when you are able to sell what it is that you have you know, and, and, and bring together what it is that you have to help others, those that are in need, but especially those that are of the household of faith. Um, and so the next place is Matthew chapter six that I'm going to go to. Um, and I'm going to read Matthew chapter six, verses 19 through 21. So 19 through 21 says, lay not up for yourselves treasure upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do, do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Okay, and so the next place I'm going to go to is Luke chapter 16. And then I have one more verse after this. Luke chapter 16, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 15. It says, And he said also unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Then the steward said within himself, what shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig to beg, I am ashamed. I am resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So this is about mercy here. It says, so he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him and said unto the first, how much owest thou unto my Lord? And he said, a hundred measures of oil. And he said unto them, Take thy bill and sit down quickly and write 50. So he showed mercy right there. Instead of the 100, he said 50. Then said he to another, and how much owest thou? And he said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said it to him, take thy bill and write four score. 
four score, I believe is 80 when I looked it up. Um, so instead of 100, it was 80. It says, and the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. I want to pause right there because in verse 8 it says, for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. So it's like the those in the world are, are more willing to show mercy sometimes than those who claim to be of God, those who profess to be of God. A lot of times those that are supposed to be children of God or the most high like to um, either have their hands closed up, you know, or, you know, yeah, they, they like to have their, their hand closed up or they don't, you know, they don't show this type of mercy when we should be showing this type of mercy. A lot of times before somebody helps someone, you know, as it pertains to those who profess God, they want to know what what this person is going to use this money for, what they're going to, you know, do with what they're giving them, or they, they're trying to make sure they're, they're not trying, that these people aren't lying about their situation or whatever it is that they have need of when really truly and honestly that's really not our place you know you're supposed to use your discernment yes when when it comes to certain certain things um when it comes to situations like this but truthfully there is a scripture in the bible that says um to 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 bless those you know, pray for those who despitefully use you. So if someone is in need or they're saying they're in need and they're using, guess what? The Lord is going to deal with those people if they're coming to you lying, you know, not really truly needing that help. He will deal with them. They will reap what they sowed. But the Lord is wanting us to be able to give freely, to have our hand ready, to have our hand open to help those who are in need who are in need when you're able to, you know, especially if you have more than enough, he wants you to be able to be willing to distribute, to help others, to sell what you have and give to others um, that are in need, that really truly need it, or to let go of certain things that he tells you to sell it in order to receive provision for what it is that you need to do or to receive something better than what it was that you were holding so tightly onto. Um, so the next place I'm gonna go to, um, I'm, I'm gonna keep reading actually. Verse nine says, um, and I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness that when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much, and he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore you have not been faithful in the right in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? And then it says, No servant can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Okay, so um, it says, and the Pharisees also who were covetous heard all these things and they derided him. And he said unto them, ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. That's self-explanatory. And then the next place is 1 Timothy chapter 6. And that's the last place. Um First Timothy chapter six and verses 17 through 19 says, charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy that they do good and that, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate laying up in store for themselves a good foundation 
against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. And so that is it. That's the last place. Um, but like I said, um, don't be afraid to let go of some things in order to receive or um, don't try to hold on so tightly to something God is wanting you to let go of in exchange for something better or or provision to do those things God has instructed you to do or to, to give to those who are actually in need. Um, sell what you have and give to the poor and needy. Charity. Show charity. And so that's the end of this prophetic word. Um, I'll be back with another one. See y'all soon.